straight. How's <laughs> <laughs> that? Perfect. Go the other one. The other way. You're the other left. No, you're the left. There you go. You go work. A little better. A little better and not perfect. No, you're good. <laughs> that was from, this, from this angle, <laughs> from this angle it looks good. There you go. There. That's better. I think. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they probably are. We were getting a stamp. Uh, well, I was saying, so we can put it here. <coughs> we're gonna get that. But I can make it on the computer. I can okay. put it on the computer. Now, on this one, mm -hmm. I would like to almost have my electronic signature on the computer just because they did it for my name. Yeah. Uh, and like, yes, so you Happy to do it. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, that's what don't have to do. At Jeffersonville, we had uh, the Commodore report thing. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of similar. Because if Mike had kids that, and to do things, then. Or anybody, you know, then he would give them like gold. So. And he, he sent us a copy of that. to recommend one addition that was left off under the department reports um, before the communication and multimedia. If you'll add um, an update from Captain, I'm sorry, from Chief Tim Wolf. I don't know why I keep calling you Captain. In my head. You're not even Captain, right? <laughs> Chief Tim Wolf. 
um, would like to do a, a brief update about some of the projects he's working on with the police department. So with that addition, I'll entertain a motion to approve that revised agenda. I'll make a motion. Okay, motion made by Jim Adams. And second. Seconded by David Reed. All in favor of approving the amended agenda? Approved. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? None? Okay, intend to approve, thank you. We have some standing business we'll work through. <clears throat> First, uh, need to entertain a motion. All of you have been prevented, uh, provided a copy of the minutes from our last meeting on January 6th. 2020, that they <laughs> um, I would entertain a motion to approve those minutes as they've been written. So made. Okay, motion made by David Reed. Second. Seconded by Jim Adams. All in favor of approving the minutes from our January 6th meeting, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? None. Motion carries unanimously. Minutes are approved. You've been presented with a copy of the claims. Then you've had all time to look over those. I would entertain a motion to approve those claims. So made. Okay. Motion made by Jim Adams. Uh, second. Seconded by David Reed. Is there any discussion on the claims? I just wanted to make clear that there were two invoices that were on this uh, claims that were uh, basically, and there's probably other ones, but I, these just caught my eye, uh, that were from last year, namely uh, uh, from the Gillum Water Attorney's Office, there was two invoices. Uh, I looked at the invoices and they were dated back last year. I just wanted to make that known that uh, there's still some bleed over into mm -hmm. these from from previous uh, the previous year. Absolutely, we still have it takes some time for these invoices to come in, and so we're still early in the month, and it's perfectly normal for those to, to come over. So, uh, any other discussion? <coughs> All in favor of approving the claims as they've been provided, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion to approve the claims is approved unanimously. The next item on our agenda is approving the payroll allowance docket, so I'll entertain a motion to approve that as it's been provided to you. So made. Motion made by David Reed. Second. Seconded by Jim Adams. Any discussion on the payroll allowance docket? Hearing none, all in favor of approving the payroll allowance socket, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? None. Motion carries to approve the payroll allowance socket as provided <coughs> unanimously. Is there any, I don't think anybody signed up for public comment. No? <coughs> you have um, a review of contracts. We have a contract that was provided to you from Southern Indiana Field Services. <coughs> contract is for providing <coughs> training and help with transitioning as we go through this transition period um, we will benefit from having a third party provider helping our planning and zoning our building commissioner through this transition primarily because there was some carry over from the previous year with some permits that were outstanding and some issues and ordinances and enforcement and so um, this is a contract a three-month contract with Southern Indian Field Services operated by Tony Jackson. Um, you can see that in the contract, he is agreeing to provide, to represent us in a professional manner and to assist the new building commissioner through this transition period and closing out the final um, things from last year and moving into this year. Also providing 20 hours a week of, <clears throat> of service to, to the current building, to the new building commissioner. Um, assisting us with meetings of planning and zoning, with board zoning appeals, um, just as we close out those remaining issues from last year. So, you know, it's a three-year contract, the amount of four thousand per month, um, and this is paid for out of the commissions collected from um, the permits in that fund. So it comes out of the two twenty-one fund, and there's a clause there that I've been assured that the money will, in fact, cover the cost of this contract, and so we have that clause there that says that the contract um, would be considered terminated if those funds are not generated from that from that fund. So um, that's the contract as it's been presented to you. Do I have a motion to approve this contract? Uh, make a motion to approve the contract. Made by David Reed. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Jim Adams. Is there any discussion on this contract? There is that clause I just wanted to highlight. There is a clause for early conclusion to this contract. So if, if this doesn't work out with Tony, uh, his services are fulfilled, 
then there's just a 30 day advance notice to terminate the contract. There is, and I have to say that Mr. Jackson has been an incredible help um, already. He has volunteered countless hours in the, in the week and a half that we have been in office and, and going. He has already come in on his own and volunteered time to help through this transition, um, keeping his office fully intact and, and managing and, and keeping those permits going. And so um, he, has generate, he has demonstrated a desire to help us through this transition from last year's closeouts into this year. And so um, I believe it's a good relationship. Do we, uh, will we still retain Mr. Wallace and Satterley from? No, okay. no, this would just, this, would, this is replacing um, any assistance that they would have provided. Okay, yeah. okay. Um, and we approved a contract for them for a tier. No, we never looked at their contract. Their okay. contract, they never, so they never presented the contract. Okay, so, okay. Yes, so um, they, they also have, have stepped in and, and provided a little assistance in the transition, but Tony Jackson has been phenomenal in providing more detailed training and, and involvement. Okay, so I, I remind me that last meeting we approved Mickey Weber's contract. Mickey Weber's, but nothing with Saturday. We did not do that. Okay, with all right. Okay. Um. <coughs> Any further discussion? All in favor of approving this contract with Southern Indian Health Services, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the contract is approved unanimously. There is no old business, but we do have some new business. The um, Parks Department has been working on a use policy and rate structure change, and so I will give the floor to our Parks Director, Marissa Knoebel, so she can come up and explain this information to you. This will require our action today. All right, I have provided a copy to each and every one of you all, so you all can see it as well as I can see it, so we're all on the same page. Until everybody gets it before I go into too much detail here. <laughs> All right, so Stephanie Manny, who is my assistant parks director, um, she and I over the last week have been trying to get um, policies kind of rolled out for the parks department because we have people that are wanting to rent out the AD building, birthday parties are starting to fill up with the family activities part. And unfortunately, we don't have a rate sheet for the year of 2020. So we wanted to kind of bring this to you all so that way it wasn't just the two of us deciding on rates and we kind of have more of a public discussion about that. So this whole package is kind of just basically um, all of the rates for both the AD building and the family activities park as far as birthday packages go. There's also a sheet in there that will discuss the um, family activities parks hours. Um, I kind of just wanted to kind of give an idea of what we're thinking about doing. Obviously, that's kind of subject to changing depending on Greater Clark County Schools. Um, their scheduling as far as when school actually gets out. Um, obviously, they've not had any snow days yet, but I wouldn't put it past it. We're still kind of in the nick of everything. So this first page is basically just the a &E building, which is the building that's located on Water Street. Um, it's just a rental building that the city owns that we kind of rent out for different things. Um, a lot of them are birthday parties, uh, baby showers. We actually kind of have a sanctuary part as well. So there's, it's basically broken into two different sections. So there's a kitchen slash dining room area. Um, the rate would be $150. There's also the humor side of things, which is the sanctuary part. It's also $150. Um, these two rates are staying the same as what previous year's rates were based on, so that's not changing at all. We did add a median size meeting um, room, which is kind of just located at the A&E building. It's um, $50 for an all-day access as well. We have been looking around, and it seems like Clarksville does this. They kind of just rent out a smaller room within their community center at $50. Um, I kind of wanted to give the um, public kind of an option to that because at $150, it may be too big of a room, but $50 to have a meeting area for people that might want to meet was something that I thought the community might benefit from. And then the whole facility is at 275. I wanted to kind of give an, um, a discounted rate almost when you rent out the whole facility. The rate was $300 a day, but I kind of felt like 
when you get more, there might be, you know, a special price for it versus having to rent it out for $300 for the whole building. So other than that, everything else is kind of staying the same as far as last year goes. If you flip to the next page, um, this is the Family Activity Park, our rental policy. Um, this has probably been the biggest change from last year to this year. Um, in previous years, they kind of rented out the room and then the employees at the um, FAP would kind of go through and tally up how many people were at the birthday parties, count up how many people did roller skating, um, counted out how many people were in the splash pad and uh, putt putt and stuff like that. Um, as a formal employee, I can tell you that that became kind of a hassle for the parks department employees. Um, you know, you're busy trying to get other people in, you're busy trying to do the concession stand and stuff like that, and it almost became too much for one person to have to sit there and just hand count everything. So we decided to do birthday packages. Again, we kind of researched this. Um, Clarksville Aquatic Center does the same thing. Jeff does the same thing. Um, we have looked and looked and looked at a lot of places in exchange to birthday packages versus the standard thing. So the way we came up with that is um, the room rate kind of stayed the same. So I don't know how familiar you are with the family activities part but the party room can kind of be separated into three different sections. Um, basically each section was $50 per price, so that kind of stayed the same as far as going into the birthday package. The package is really the only thing that changes is to do all of the activities at the Family Activities Park in the past would cost $5 for flash time, roller skating, and putt-putt. The birthday package would give them a discount at $3, so it would just be the general mission. Um, it's a way to kind of say, you know, thank you for buying the birthday package and it kind of clumps it all together. Um, so package ones would be a savings of about $20. Package two would be $40 savings and then package three would be a $60 savings. Um, I feel like that's a better way to kind of handle the business because people can kind of pay up front. Again, it takes the stress off of the family activities park employees trying to like hand count everything up. Um, for private party rentals for the whole facility is staying at $500. Um, that was standard procedure as last year, so I wanted to kind of keep it the same. Uh, if you flip to the next page, this is going to be our family activity park hours. Again, pending how things go, we may have to change that um, as business starts up. The big change that you will see is that we do plan on being open on Sundays. Um, I've heard a lot of people in the community, you know, they want the park to be open on Sundays. A lot of parents only have Saturday and Sunday off, and so it would give them an opportunity to spend time with their family, and also hopefully that would be a good thing for us. Um, I've talked to a couple of different places, the Sellers for School, um, Clarksville Cove, and stuff like that. Um, they've always said that Saturday and Sundays are their busiest days, so I don't see why we can't also also be open on those days. You will see that on Fridays and Saturdays, instead of being open from 10 to 7, we're open from 10 to 5. The reason for that is we will close early on Fridays and Saturdays to allow private parties to be able to come in. Um, I wanted to kind of stay consistent so it wasn't like we were just randomly closing on a Friday for a private visit at 5 o'clock versus closing at the normal 7. So I wanted to uh, give the consistency for the public so that way they kind of knew Oh, it's Friday, it closes at 5 versus, oh, sometimes it's 7, sometimes it's 5. So, um, if you flip to the next page, sorry, it's forever long. Uh, this is just our rental agreement for the Family Activities Park. Um, again, the packages are just listed. It's the same price as what you just saw. Uh, the rules and regulations, the City of Jeff has been phenomenal with their Parks Department and allowed us to use kind of their... Um, building rental agreement and those rooms are basically the same applied to Jeff as they would be with us. Um, really the only thing would be on the second page. The only thing that I kind of wanted to point out to you all was rule number 9 and rule number 11. Um, 9 just says that it's a $50 non-refundable deposit to kind of save the date for the family activity part. Um, you know you just it's nice to have that so that way you're not saying, oh yeah, we're booked and then somebody cancel 48 hours before and then you don't have that date available for somebody else. Um, that seems like a pretty standard event. 
Uh, it would be $50 for the birthday parties and then $100 for private events. Um, for birthday parties, the balance would be due about 24 hours before their birthday parties begin, just because, again, it allows us to kind of upfront have the money and not have to worry about them not showing up. And then it would be seven days prior for um, private events. The reason why I made that one a longer was, um, again, I have to be able to staff the Finley Activities Park and I need to know about a week in advance if I need to staff people that Friday and Saturday night for a longer period of time. So, if you look to the next section, this is our rental agreement for the Arts and Enrichment Center. Again, all the pricing is the same. The rules and regulations are the same as what they would be at the Family Activities Park. Um, it is still a $50 non-refundable deposit at the time of reservation, and then the outstanding balance would be due seven days prior. I made it seven days prior because, again, people want to be able to get in and stuff like that, and I need to be able to say yes a week before that that is booked off and everything else. The last two packages, I'm kind of just going to go over it together. Um, they're just the employee rental agreement forms. I wanted to give our city employees something. Um, you know, they do a lot of hard work and I want to be able to allow them to reap the benefits of working within the city and stuff like that. But I also wanted it to be fair and justified. Um, in previous years, uh, it was just they got it for free no matter how many times they used it. And as much as I would love to be able to give that to them, it's a business decision. So we decided um, that they would get the village rental twice, both at the a and &E building and at the um, SAP. And then after that, it would just be at a discounted rate. Um, as much as I didn't want to book it all the way up with employees every single weekend because then we're not making money after a certain amount of time. So other than that, if you have any questions, I will answer it. How many employees do you have that would actually do this on a total? Do you know? Yes. Okay. How many do you have? Do you know the I mean, number or how many? Oh gosh. I, I don't have like an exact number just like that because we well, haven't had um, I'm just people. thinking if, if everybody takes advantage of this, how yeah. many mm -hmm. um, people? I know that I've had one employee that's going to be running out the A&E building three times. <coughs> um, but most people, it's just been one. Um, I just wanted to make it a fair thing for everybody to kind of have. I think two is justified. You still get your kind of your usage out of it, but it's not taking up every single weekend. I guess I just don't want it to become a uh, city function building right. for the private sector. Doesn't right. get, uh, and I, and I it, I understand and I agree with your intent. I just know that uh, in my experience in other places, it got to the point where. The public really didn't get to participate because right. the employees had either yeah. somehow overcome um, it. I wish I could give you a record of how many times it was used last year. Unfortunately, I don't have a record of how many times the employees actually used it. Um, I can tell you that really, if I can remember correctly and don't quote me on this, I want to say it's maybe three different employees that came to me so far to rent out the A&E building. Um, it's, standard practice in the past that they just got it for free no matter how many times they used it so don't again, a lot of people to, in. yeah do, do you have does your department have a plan in place to um, <clears throat> make this self-sustaining i.e you know market this in right. terms of um, you know it not being available for the city employees to book it every weekend because it's not yeah. commercially booked um, I don't have a plan in place right now. It's a good idea to probably come up with something like that, just even if it's, you know, every third Saturday would be kind of more of an employee kind of day. But again, it's worked out well so far as far as scheduling that nobody's kind of like upped any other date. Well, I'm, I'm less concerned with employees booking it and more concerned with right. the public getting to use it. Yeah. So is there, do you have a will you have a marketing plan in place to, to publicize the price list, to, um, to um, I guess, market it so people know this is a viable party option? Um, I don't want to go into too many details about the future because I don't want to sit here and promise, oh yes, we plan on doing this. Um, I do know that we want to get a website up and going. That's something that currently the Parks Department does not have their own separate website. 
Um, as far as the marketing plan, it's just not something that I had thought about doing. Um, it's definitely a good idea to kind of get some sort of package out there to the public, whether it's just on the website, on our social media pages, and right. stuff like that. But extended the, from that idea, no, I had not thought about a marketing plan. From what I see, I have three young kids, and my wife's planning a party now. Yeah. And these are cheap. These are right. these are competitive, uh, fair prices. They are, yeah. So if my wife knew about this yesterday, she may have booked us. All I'm saying yeah. is. Is the you know can can you put a marketing plan in place and not necessarily having an objective to lease it out for for eighty days of the year, but right. you, here's what we're going to do to let everyone know these are available. Yeah. Can we do that? Yeah, I mean, okay. so I can feel like we as a collective group can definitely get a better grip of the marketing standard of things. So, is there a provision in place so that charitable organizations that involved that are <coughs> providing services to the entire community are able to use the A and E Center um, for free? Yes, at a discounted or free price, depending on. So, I mean, for example, like the Lions Club meets there right now. They give a lot of charity work for the um, community and stuff like that. So. They're at a discounted rate versus, you know, <coughs> private events and stuff like that. Um, we do have a couple people that are actually using the A&E building um, on a pretty regular basis, and so we've not been able to collect money because I wanted to kind of get contracts signed and rates approved before I like went ahead and did anything too drastic. Any? Can you envision any uh, upkeep or, or changes or painting for any <coughs> facilities? Do, do, do either of the facilities need anything? Um, I mean, I would definitely like to see the A and E building be kind of updated. Um, we are in the process of getting the heat kind of restored back up to its um, kind of glory days. Um, it went out earlier this week, so we're actually in the process of that. Um, but the Family Activity Park was open in 2013, and it's in. I mean, Rhonda Davidson took a remarkable care of that facility, um, also with the a &E building. I mean, they're both pretty nice structured buildings. Um, you know, the rates are a little bit lower than maybe what the lodge is out in Clarksville. They have a lodge that they kind of rent out, but it's a little bit nicer, a little bit newer and stuff like that. So the rates definitely respect a more older building type situation. Um, Nothing, nothing immediate that you see? No, there's nothing, I mean, like I said, I mean, we've had birthday parties that have been going out and rented out so far, and everybody seems fairly pleased with it. Uh, I do have one question about your operating hours. Would it be possible to change the operating hours on Sunday until afternoon from 12 to 7 instead of 10? Right. And yeah. being cognizant of faith-based activities that right. I happen on Sunday morning. Right. Uh, it, I don't know that you'll see much activity at 10 a.m. Right. On, on a Sunday. Um, so. And that would all just depend on <clears throat> pending. I mean, again, I wish I could tell you break it down hour by hour how much the family activity park was making. Um, you know, I would love to say, yeah, we're going to be really busy at 11, but we could die off at 4 o'clock <coughs> and people start to go home. And so we can probably at that point, reevaluate our hours of operation if we needed. I think it's important to note for the board that um, the Parks Department is operating at an information deficit in many ways, um, that many of the paper documents that would have been over there that might have provided some of this information are not available to them. So um, I would ask us to keep that in mind as well as they've been working through this process and generating the information that they've been able to recover with the assistance of the clerk treasurer on expenditures and, and revenue, but also um, in comparison to other parks and other communities of similar nature. I just want to commend you for a lot of work that's been happening in a very short period of time, and it, you've done a wonderful job accumulating all this and putting it together, so I, I think it's a great job. I'll entertain a motion to approve the rate structure and operating hours with the change to noon on Sunday. Can I? Request instead of noon to be later than that because some churches don't let out till noon. Um, would you say 1 p.m.? I would think 1, 12 30, 1 o'clock. Okay, so yeah. I'll entertain a motion to approve this rate structure and offer operations for our hours for operations with the change that on Sunday it will start at 1. I'll make a motion. Okay. So, motion made by David Green, second, seconded by Jim Adams. Any additional discussion on this matter? All in favor of this rate structure and these hours of operations with the amended Sunday change, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? None. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Marissa. Thank you. <clears throat> At this point, we'll go into our department reports. Um, some people have updates and some people don't, um, but it'd be interesting to hear 
Um, according to the amended agenda, we'll begin with Chief Tim Wolf from the Charlestown <coughs> Police Department. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, just a few things we're working on. Uh, Major Gilbert and I are, are coming to the finish line on hiring our 16th officer. Um, we actually have a uh, informal interview with a possible lateral uh, hire tomorrow. Um, we have a few others we're uh, finishing some background investigations on. Hopefully we'll be able to bring those to the mayor for a mayoral interview. And hopefully in a couple weeks we'll be bringing for board approval. So, um, also working on uh, a grant for a possible 17th hire. Um, this this uh, it's a federal cops grant. It come available on January 9th to March 11th. So that's one of the things that I'm working on currently is trying to get that improved. Um, as you know, the town's growing. We have to have a plan in place for growing our police department, and this is one way I've. Uh, the mayor and I felt that we could uh, help assist in growing the department. Uh, so those, those those two things as far as increasing uh, manpower. Um, one thing I want to put on your radar as well is um, vehicles. Uh, our fleet is aging uh, pretty bad. Um, I need, at this point, eight cars. Uh, I have two 2011s, two 2013s, and four 2014s. Uh, life cycle of a police car is about four to five years. So um, I'm running into problems over and above normal maintenance levels, uh, uh, transmissions, uh, camshafts, uh, cooling systems, front end, you know, steering components. I mean, uh, it's, it's unbelievable the uh, electronic problems. I've had some vehicles that they've that started and the, the needle starts sleeping and they won't go above five miles an hour. And that's mostly with the Dodge Chargers. Um, last September, the board approved uh, the purchase of a 2020 Chevrolet Tahoe. Uh, it was ordered uh, through John Jones. I called on the status of that order last week and it has been canceled. Um, the UAW strike really hampered uh, the production of a lot of GM vehicles. Um, so that car is not being made. It's, it's not being made at all. They're not going to make Tahoes until fall, and that'll be the 2021 model year. So that project is, is scrapped. Um, also, the Dodge Chargers. Uh, they are not making any Dodge Chargers this year. Uh, there seems to be a shortage of transmissions. I uh, spoke with our representative at John Jones, and of the, I think he said 530 orders for chargers, only a third of those are going to be filled. The rest of them, they're not going to even make them anymore. Um, so that pretty much leaves the only police vehicle viable right now is the Ford uh, Interceptor Utility. Um, so that's really the only thing that I have to look at right now. So. Um, I hope uh, by next meeting I can have some more information as far as the price list or anything like that. I need to get Officer Heyman, who is the canine officer, in a new vehicle. Uh, right now he is currently using the backup canine car. Um, it doesn't even have radio in it. So uh, he's been in that for several months. So we need to look at getting him something uh, pretty soon. We do have $24,000, which was uh, part of the insurance settlement from uh, Sergeant Bertram Threg. Uh, so that can go towards the purchase of another car, but uh, uh, by next meeting I can have some more information. What was the cost uh, for that Tahoe that got canceled? What, what was it? Do you want the total cost with all the equipment or just yeah. the vehicle itself? What was approved? What was I don't know. I'd have to look to see it's what those... Significant. It's, it's, it's not a, a cheap car, correct? A fully equipped police car, 9K9, is about sixty-five dollars to $70,000. That's the vehicle and equipment. That, is that Tahoe, though? Or is no, just that's, it, that's what so Tahoe's is. probably a little more expensive, maybe? A Ford, let's see, uh, Tahoe is, a prior, is right about the same price. Okay. Uh, the Intercept Utility, um, they've gone down a little bit in price. Um, it used to be, I can, I can get one of those now, base model for 34000 an interceptor utility. Um, but that's Tahoe, not stocked, that's just the base. That's, that's, just, just, the, that's just the car. Another thirty five in equipment. That's sirens, lights, computers, body cameras. Uh, for the canine car, that includes the canine cage, 
Um, you've got printers, scanners, uh, there's a VHF radio, uh, mobile 800 radio, uh, gun racks, uh, graphics. There's a lot that goes into these cars, and it's it's gone up over the years. From from your perspective, um, so it sounds like the funds at some point were available to purchase a Tahoe. Mm -hmm. um, from your perspective, as leading an organization. Would that money be, should you wait for a Tahoe to come about later in the year or next year? Or would those funds be better utilized on a car today? Am I asking the right question? Mm -hmm. I, I need it. Yeah, yeah I need this, it. This is a need that was established okay. last year. I need year. it like yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> so, so there are funds somewhere floating that um, can purchase. Chief, can you plan on um, researching that a little bit on how that, where those funds came from and bring that back to us as a formal bid at the, uh, it'd be the February 5th meeting um, so that we can take action on that on Officer Hammond's vehicle. What what direction does he need to go? Is is that something we need competitive bids on? One, two, three bids, or yes, state bid pricing. I think according to state statute, you don't need a okay. bid. Okay. I know on the on the, the Chevys um, and the Dodges you do, but on the Ford, since we get state bid pricing, mm -hmm. we don't need three competitive bids. Um, That's the way we've done it in the past. We have, <clears throat> I think, five Fords in our fleet right now. Um, five or six, I can't, I don't know off the top of my head. Um, and when those were ordered, those are at state bid price. That's, nobody does any better than that. So if we go Ford, which it, it's, there's no competitive. Okay. You know, so at this point, I don't think he needs to chase around it. No, but if you could bring back that formal. Yeah. Uh, actual information for us at the next meeting for us to vote on and take action. Right now, we have, we don't have anything in front of us to be able to take action on approving this purchase. So, if you could if you could bring that to us with the breakdown of the costs and everything next time, that would be fantastic. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? Any other, uh, more updates on that? That's it. That's the most dire. Uh, that's what we're uh, working on right now. Just getting up the full staff and then uh, vehicles. One suggestion, don't hesitate to bring ideas. If, if mm -hmm. on that, uh, just the, the Tahoe situation and if you need a car, bring us something that we can, okay. can help you with. <clears throat> One of the things I was looking at with the, uh, the cars, Ford has the, uh, the Interceptor Utility Hybrid. It's now their base model. It uses a hybrid motor, motor and it, Ford touts that it's supposed to save between uh, $3,500, $7,000 a year in fuel costs. Chief, could you speak to a little bit um, for the board's knowledge um, about why that hybrid would be important based on the running of the vehicle and the way that they have to stay running and the, the wear down on the engine? Yeah. Um, <laughs> get asked all the time, why do you all leave your cars running? And uh, it used to be 10, 15 years ago, you could you know, turn the car off and go to you know, an EV or go to the station, do your reports or whatever. Now you can't do that. There's so much, you, know, you can see $35,000 in electronics and computers and cameras and things like that. Those cars have to stay running. So that's how the technology stays functioning. Yeah. If, if it goes off, if you turn the car off, the tech goes down as well, correct? All of our, um, all of our calls, now that we've gone to a central dispatch, um, are disseminated through um, a CAD system, which is in our vehicles. Um, so we receive updates, we receive our calls for service, and things like that, they're all done on a computer in our car. Plus our, our um, we have, I think, four or five body camera systems, and all the cars have in-car cameras. Um, we now, we're starting to implement the body cams. Um, all those systems require several minutes to boot up. So if we were to go someplace, turn our cars off, the computer shuts down, the camera system shuts down, if we get a, a hot run, a 911 call, you know, we have to go start a car, wait for these things to boot up, and that can take anywhere from five to 10 minutes, and that's just not viable. With the hybrid vehicles that I'm looking at, um, they actually shut off and run off the battery. The, the motor shuts off and, and the, the vehicle runs off the battery. The, all the electric components run off the battery. Um, you know, that's where you get fuel savings is, is the idle time spent. Uh, so Ford claims that there's a, uh, I haven't, I just read this on their brochure, they have an eight year, 100,000 mile power, or a hybrid powertrain components warranty. I don't know exactly, I have to dive in that a little bit more, I don't know if that means the battery, but hopefully 
you know, the life cycle of the lease car is five years, that car would be being replaced in anyway. So Approximately how many miles do you put per year on a car? Would you miles, miles, you know, you know, some, some officers live further outside the city, so they're going to travel a little bit more. You know, myself, I've had my car for years, almost about 15,000 miles on it, uh, but I don't, I don't do a lot of patrol. It, it's like I said, it's not the mileage, it's the, it's the idle time. Okay. You know, um, some of these cars, some of these older cars, uh, these 2013s, 2011s have over 100,000 miles on them now. Some okay. of the 2014s have about 80 to, to, to 90,000, approaching that 100,000. That that's less than I would have guessed. But yeah. Okay. Just, no, noteworthy, I think, in, in these claims, is that for the month? Because we spend five thousand dollars a month, or at least on this claim in fuel. Yeah, the that, fuel costs are quite high. And I so mean, is that a month? Do you think? Because yeah. I don't know what that. What's your fuel budget? My fuel year? budget, I think, was sixty thousand a year, and I don't. I, this is my first. I don't know if we go over that or not. I, I could check with the yeah. uh, uh, treasurer's yeah. office, sure. Steve. I, I think maybe we have before not over that, but this must be for the month. Then we would spend five thousand yeah, dollars in fuel so. if we can cut that down i mean that's yeah your initial your initial cost on the hybrid model is about twenty five hundred dollars more than the the the, the, the 3.5 liter ecoboost motor um but if you're going to save that i mean in year you could make that up in your fuel savings and then so longevity you're, you're going to have a car four years five years is that what you mm -hmm. said so mm -hmm. your payback's one year on you, you on the gas savings mm -hmm. yeah and I know a lot of hybrid vehicles, that as far as oil changes and things like that, they go, you know, 10, 15,000. I haven't researched that. So I'm hoping that if we can start implementing these in our fleet, um, you know, I, I can spend less time in the shop. Are you aware of any other police departments that have gone that route, the hybrid route, and any feedback? There's still some new. I haven't. Um, mm -hmm. I've, uh, I, when you ask that, I know of, I was just reading the other day about a police department in northern Indiana just bought a Tesla. Is, but that's, <laughs> that's completely well, electric, yeah. though. And right. I don't think uh, I've heard some stories about. Involved yeah. in that Whoa, so now. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know if I want to go that far. But the thing with the, the utility hybrid is the the performance numbers are very comparable to that of the uh, the EcoBoost V6, yeah. and that actually it was um, outperformed the Durango and the Tahoe in performance tests. So. I, you know, times are changing. I think it's a, a viable option to look at. You know, if we can, if I can, if I can keep these cars out of the shop and save some money in fuel, then I'm all for it. Do you? Would you buy this from the same uh, vendor as the um, Dodges and the Tahoes, or is it a different vendor? Uh, Bloomington Ford. I think that's what the the name of that. I think they changed. That's the only um, dealership in Indiana where we can get the safe pricing. Mm -hmm. We can't get it from any, so we have to buy them from Bloomington Ford. Okay. No, no, re no local resource then. No, I, I think John Jones is able to get them, but they actually go through Bloomington Ford as well. So, yeah. so you know, I just who deals directly with Bloomington Ford. We, I have, I've got a good relationship with the salesman there. <coughs> he's, he's helped us a lot in the past. So. All right, Chief, if you could bring us that back for actual action next, um, would be the fifth of February. That would be fantastic. All right, thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, um, Communication and Multimedia Director Leah Lyles. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I've got a couple of notes. Um, I'd just like to offer a brief update on the status of projects within our department and also speak in general terms if I can on behalf of the mayor's new staff in those related areas. Um, today is our 10th day in office officially. A lot of people came in on the first and have worked through the weekends. Um, Rather than rehashing any transition issues, I just want to catch you up to speed on where we are. Um, we've got a great team. They're young and capable. Many of them are new to Municipal Work, and for that reason, coming in and working from a, a blank slate has been a test of both, both their metal and their resourcefulness. So please allow me to put on record that they've done a phenomenal job in that regard. Um, as you can tell from Marissa's presentation, they're, they're really getting up to speed. They've remained adaptable, and things are going well. But Many of them have been slowed down since we came in because of technology issues and files. Some departments were left in better shape than others, and um, Parks was one that we've had to piece back together. But over the last week, I've been able to recover a couple of hard drives that I think will provide some information that, that can be useful to them. 
Um, so here's where we're at in terms of some things that we've done and some changes that we've made. We've made a migration to Microsoft email-wise from G Suite, and we've placed that in the hands of C3 Tech as a third-party vendor, just some checks and balances so that this never happens again transitionally. We want to ensure that when we leave, everything's backed up to the hard drive, it's controlled by a, a neutral third-party vendor, the, the clerk treasurer uses the same vendor, and they come highly recommended. John Spencer and I have discussed this quite a bit. He's in agreement that this is a good move. Um, and so uh, you'll see that there, there, there's a contract in place already with them. They were handling some things, John is handling other things. Some of those things that John handled um, will now just transition to them in terms of separate servers. It's all gonna be on one server, clerk treasurer, mayor's office will be partitioned for security reasons, for everyone's comfort. Um, we streamlined the Wi-Fi system. There are many different networks throughout City Hall. John's a really smart guy. I'm sure there was a, a reason for it. Um, however, we have transitioned to the mayor's office Wi-Fi, the clerk's office Wi-Fi, and we have a public ac access now. Um, so it's, it's easy and they're all easily identifiable. Uh, so the wireless changes. We have worked in the last week or so um, to ensure that everyone, at least mayor staff-wise, the new, the new people, have a working desktop or laptop computer. We've set up email access, um, and we've got um, cell phones as needed. We're working through some quirks with the phone system. We anticipate this to be resolved in the next several days. Um, but I do want to point out, uh, for, for their sake, as they come up with, with their reports, they were behind approximately a week and due to no computers, working from their own computers, sharing computers, so that they create some lag, but they've really caught up to speed and it's not been an issue. I, I, wanna, I also want to point out that John Spencer um, has worked not only with myself, but with the Parks Department staff to be of assistance whenever called in the last week. We plan to meet the next week to go over a list of items and work to ensure some continuity. John's department, my department, this department in particular has had a lot of balls in the air, so there's a lot of things to discuss and catch up on and we're getting there. He's been extremely helpful and I just like the record to reflect that in a public way because we appreciate it, and we appreciate the clerk treasurer and her staff as well. So um, we'll be working to improve the AV quality of our live stream and video production. Um, we're working on some website updates, and we have a conference call in the works regarding the repair of the LED signs. John and myself will speak with this representative and figure out how to proceed. But um, I'll digress at this point, and I'll be happy to entertain any questions that you guys have for me or regarding the tech issues that the rest of the staff has. Do you foresee in the near future any equipment updates that we need to be thinking about? Potentially, but I need about? I need a little more time to talk with John about it. I think that everything he's left everything in pretty good working order. We we may need to invest a little bit in these signs to get them repaired. He, that's something that he had been trying to work through as he finished up and one yeah. of the signs there was, there was a to be clear the signs that she's talking about is a lot of signs the LED, Market Street, the LED and the informational signs sign. and so the one at the yeah. family activity yeah. and they're linked and if one has an issue it can create an issue in general because they both come from the same do you, you know why they're not they were inoperable i guess i'm really not sure we haven't had a chance to get up to speed on that but we're going to be meeting probably next week instead of peppering john with questions i've been working through a list of things as i discovered <coughs> and if it's urgent i talk to him right away um and then we're going to meet and go over a, a, a full agenda of items. And John's not a formal employee of the mayor's office. He right? is. John actually what held this position before me. He was, but he was. not currently. He is not currently. Yes. Okay. No. Um, so, is there been? Have you had a thought process? Are those signs integral to the future, or I, is there an evaluation to? You know, is this something we need for the community, or we're going to look at? It. I think okay. that, that I'd like to. Have, to uh, seek some public input on that. Yes. Because people do find that informative. Not everyone is on Facebook, not everyone is on Twitter, not everyone checks the website. Mm -hmm. There are people that still look for the things in the newspaper and they, they appreciate the signs. I think that, you know, I think they've been a great, and so I think public input is the, the way to proceed with okay. that. All right. Thank you, Leah. Mm -hmm. um, Toby, did you have an update on streets and drainage? <coughs> <clears throat> on High Street, we've gotten several complaints about sidewalks, so I'm reviewing the sidewalks. There is several spots there that is going to have to be redone. 
<coughs> then we're going to start up on Clark Street. That sidewalk needs to be addressed right away. The park out in Danbury, we still got the shelter to finish up, side and park, parking, and that'll be off our plate. And that, is that the last of the parks? The last yes, of the pocket parks? Yes, ma'am. Then we have uh, Monroe and Marl. It keeps breaking up there. We're going to put a quick patch on there to get through the winter. Then this spring, we're going to work in, on the uh, asphalt to redo, to take the hill out and try to get something there or it's not breaking up every year. And we've got a couple of little spots down in row we need to address some drainage issues. And these old sidewalks, these are these are years old, uh, correct? Yeah, the years high old. Street and yeah, the Park high road. street, it's breaking up right there behind the switch there, that big house. It's falling off there. Then coming down uh, from the library on Clark Street, mm -hmm. it's just breaking up. It's been at a direct. You've got guys going down through there with uh, hover rounds, and just bouncing everywhere. It, it, I, think, I think it's important to note that those those are near the housing authority houses yes. and also you know leading down to the middle school. And so as we're talking about creating pathways for safety, the schools and those those walking or, or communities where people are using motorized chairs or things are, are very important. So yeah, see down the high street, there's only probably two, three spots that have handicap accessible. We need to get them to where they can go down through there and like the mayor said for housing and all that. Thank you, Toby. Um, Lee, I think, had to step out. Yeah, he had a dog bite call. So okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad <laughs> he took off. I think um, I, I can just uh, speak very briefly to the fact that I think last time he was here, he mentioned that they had ordered the trash cans and they were not in yet. They received those orders, they're here, and they're in the process of delivering those those new trash cans for people who had ordered them. So. Um, Mike Perry, did you have enough wastewater update for us real quick? Uh, really, I don't have enough unless anybody's got any questions on anything. Yeah, uh, when do you th anticipate starting on your phosphorus enclosure? Uh, actually, just yesterday I met with uh, Josh and Mike from Jacoby Coons and Lance. We did a walk around, went over everything. Uh, he's going to go back and start putting some stuff together. We looked at some options on how we can do it um, and, and things like that. So we got the ball rolling. We actually have until March of next year to actually be in place with something final done is. Oh, so like I said, the, I use this March as the drop dead date because of the time it takes to finalize your plan, get your bids, your secure your funding, design work, construction, and final approvals. It's gonna take a year or longer. Okay. We, we can file for bins we've had to change. We, we can play that and file for an extension on a timeline. I don't know what it would give us, but I mean, there are things there to help us out. Well, we shouldn't be, there should be no enforcement on it. What's our procedure for actually getting from where we are now to getting Jacobian Tombs to start developing some design issues? Uh, I've provided them with all of last year's monthly report of operations, plus, uh, which I meant to, Send it yesterday, got a phone call, got distracted. I got to go back today and do it. Some other paperwork were on our daily phosphorus monitoring. I've got a separate page that shows our influent effluent. Loading values, results, flows, and all that uh, that I'm gonna submit to them to show what we've been doing since we've been doing this trial period of the aqua hawk injection. But do we actually uh, issue a, a work order to Jacobian Tombs to get moving on that. Josh, did you? I mean, want your, their to contract. How do we get your contract? We will. Uh, that's what we talked about with Mike yesterday. Is putting together some estimates of construction, design, schedule. Uh, we're talking to some of his vendors so that we know everything involved and anticipate uh, bringing a work order for that specific task to you at an upcoming meeting. Okay, and so whenever those need to come in, you will get with us on the agenda and that'll be in advance. 100%. Okay, thank you. All right, Mike, that's you're, right. gonna, you're gonna rely on JTL. When you're, you're, you're essentially transitioning information Well, I'm, I'm working with them. Yeah, okay. I mean, you know, this, because they're gonna have questions because of the familiarization with our plant and things and you know on points of where we need to do certain things and you know because like they might come up with an idea of a place of doing something but yet we may have something underground that may be in restriction with that 
So, you know, we're making changes right. and things so like that. So there's not a full transition. You, you guys are Usually working. your engineers in all cases when it comes to working with IDM, uh -huh. that's usually the one who handles that because there, it's, it's a, mostly going to be engineering questions. Right. And uh, so usually that's what we do is we get together and we formulate our plan. Once we get that, then they go to IDM with it and then they work it out on the engineering so, side. So we should assume there's a dual responsibility between you as department head and JTL to get this completed yeah. when it's supposed to be completed? Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank I was you. looking more for JTL to be uh, commissioned to move forward. And well, yeah. they do they'll, they'll yeah. bring those work orders. That, so. That'll happen in the next meeting. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, they're just talking now, but I'm not sure how you're handling uh, compensation for that talking. Yesterday was just a meeting to, to get on board and up to speed with everything. Uh, once we get the work order, that's when the, the clock starts ticking. So, so when once the once work orders are granted and approved, basically on our night, I guess if that's the the process, JTL will have the responsibility to get get everything done using your ongoing expertise and knowledge. Yeah, is that how we provide them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you're going to be there 100 percent of the way. Yes, but the responsibility once we transition and deliver the product when we need it. Yeah, when they say it's going to be done. Yeah. Mike's okay. the boss, and we're going to take direction from him on everything. Uh, but we're going to <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. he's the boss. raises back off. <laughs> we're going to, we'll take that direction from him on what to do, but then we're going to take it and lead the charge to make sure it happens. Okay. Right. All right, thank you, Mike. Uh, just real quick, when you were talking about the signs, I do know since the, we don't have the leader no more, I, I, being a member of the fire department, we do several events mm -hmm, throughout yeah. the year, and that's one of the ways people say, well, I didn't know you was doing this because I seen it on the side when I was going down the road. Yeah. So they are beneficial to a lot of organizations as far as getting information out, you know, as to what's okay. going on. It, so, it's interesting. Uh, uh, I'm glad you brought that up. It's um, just kind of hitting back on that point. It, if once there's a, a, a decision to move forward, repair, what's, you know, you know, can you wrap your arms around at some point? What are the costs to operate? <coughs> right. you know, that'll all be presented. Is it worth it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, Director of City Services, Toby Williamson. Yeah. Um, Let me just step back in as well. So um, I, I updated him on the, on the scan. So. Are we skipping parks because we've already We're skipping there. parks because we've already <laughs> heard from, from Marissa, Marissa and, and just what she's been working on for the past two weeks. So, <laughs> yes. yeah. Um, Bring forward, I'm the new director of city services, Toby Morrison. Um, I started just this past Monday, so I was a week later than most of the rest of the staff. So I've been working um, at an even greater deficit to get caught up than they have. But um, moving right along, um, you're starting to settle in now, um, starting to make contacts, set up some meetings. So full steam ahead. I'm um, excited to be here, and we've got some good stuff um, already happening and in place to happen in the future. So as far as some of the things that I've been working on, um, going to set up a, um, a sanitation survey and audit. I'm going to do some ride-alongs um, with Mr. Slaughter over sanitation to figure out um, ways that we can better improve our sanitation services in the city, um, figure out any, you know, delinquent, um, you know, fees that need to be paid, things like that, so we can, you know, get, um, get caught up financially. Um, I know that the city has um, had some uh, financial difficulties with some of the routes, so we're working on getting that caught up. Um, also, one of the things that's going to be taking a lot of my time in the next couple um, days, if not weeks, I'll be working closely with the clerk treasurer's office on something called the um, annual survey of local finance or local government finances. It's something um, done by the U.S. Census Bureau, um, so that's going to be a, a very big project. Take a couple of days to work um, set that up. Um, but otherwise, just um, like Leah mentioned, getting caught up on the technology, getting some meetings scheduled, um, just settling in into place and getting ready to get started. So, Thank you, Tobin. Right. Tobin, you're going to be you're going to be your um, department heads report to you. Is that how we should look at that, or not? I wouldn't say necessarily report to me. Okay. I they, I kind of do a lot of the coordination between the different departments. Okay. So um, um, just so that you know, Jim, um, we this was one of the restructures items that we did when when my administration right. began department heads report to me yes. um, as okay. the executive okay. um, Tobin's position works as uh, kind of a liaison between and a problem solver so folks in the community that have issues that need to be addressed put their call them through Tobin and he dispatches them to the correct department he also provides um, the kind of background assessment and like you said the audit of the sanitation services for instance to find our lost revenue 
and also to make sure that we're providing sanitation services at the best of, right. of you know to meet the ordinances and things that we're supposed to be doing so, so he does that he also serves on some different boards and manages some uh, grant writing type stuff so i'll be working closely with mr slaughter and uh, mr Marcel, but they will not be reporting directly to me they will report to the mayor so okay if that clears that up for you it does okay mm -hmm. All right, thank you so much. Right, thank you. Planning and zoning, Mike Hughes. I did this at my desk. Oh my God, I'm sorry. Yeah. We had our first uh, advisory plan commission meeting on uh, this past Monday. Uh, at that time, we elected new uh, members. Uh, they were sworn in by the mayor. Uh, we had a very short meeting. Uh, we continue the, the, we're going through permits and everything, and all of our subdivisions are, are just busting at the seams. We'll go on as quick as we can. Uh, trying to get everything done uh, with Tony Self for doing a really, really great job. Uh, I think things are going around really, really well all that. The only thing that, that I've got extra, uh, we the, the police department, Chuck Ledbetter, is working to get me a body cam. Uh, we'll have that next week. That way when I go on a call, no matter what it is, uh, there's it's documented uh, video and audio. Uh, we've needed that a couple times on a situation already and, and uh, we'll have that in place next week sometime. Also, Chuck had asked me, we met yesterday, and he wants me to be part of CAD with them. Mm -hmm. Not that I get all the police information, and I won't, I don't need it, uh, but it would be in, in this situation where there's a suspicious fire or something like that, that nature of at nighttime or something, I would be aware of it when I came in that morning, and that way we could, we could just save a lot of time. Uh, we could start working on everything and, and have all that information in, in place. Sounds good. Mike, uh, may I ask a question? Um, Absolutely. Can you, you so you, you've been on the job 10 no days? Way. Yes, <laughs> all right. Um, so is it, do you know how many housing permits we've had January 1 until today? Just roughly? Seven, eight, nine, I don't, I would have to just, go back. It's a random question, but, but just to, I want to quantify busting at the seams. We, Because I'm, I'm doing everything. I, we're not only issuing permits, I'm doing all the inspections and everything also. Yeah. Uh, I, we issued uh, three, I believe, for actually screens uh, last week. Uh, we've got some going out of Heritage. Uh, we're doing home inspections. I'm trying to do finals. Uh, we, we're, we're rolling pretty good with the cities. Yeah. One thing, and it's not a big deal, but it's it's just uh, interesting to hear uh, from time to time. If you can, you know, we we've had, if you give us a running total of housing permits, okay, because it's we're growing, and and it's it's good to hear we're growing and we're busting at the seams, mm -hmm. but let's quantify it. Mm -hmm. and, and certain things, Jim, something I, if I don't actually have that permit. I can't tell you, I can't speculate, hey, I've got word that this is going to come. No, you I just, just true. Yeah, it has yeah. to be black white before it, I can let you know that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. If it's just new new housing permits, but, but uh, you know, you're, you do final inspection or whatever, mm -hmm. that, that's, that's, you know, a new housing permit will at some point translate into you granting absolutely. final absolutely. occupancy or whatever that is. Um, that, that's just good to hear and keep that running total. Um, that way, we know that you know it truly is growing um, and busting at the seams. Okay. So, Mike, I think I, I think I know the answer, but I uh, just wanted to pose the question anyhow. Um, Pleasant Ridge, the abandoned homes that are were, in my view, slated for removal, seems as though that's that procedure is stopped. Um, do you have any in, insight as to why? I know the developer probably owns those homes, and he's in limbo, I guess, until he's pushed one way or the other. Instead of me, can we wait until next, and I can give you a depth, something, I, instead of speculating. <clears throat> okay, I didn't know if there was something you knew, but <clears throat> I kind of thought yeah, you, yeah, you're, I, I, you're going in too many directions to know exactly what I, that I, is. I, I, and the mayor and I have had this conversation. I, I would rather have this in black and white okay. than, than to that's say what well, they're telling me. And that's one of the things that the body cam will, will do. When I talk to whether it's a builder or whoever, then we can say, okay, we talked about this, where are we at on it, and, and what's, what, give me a deadline. Okay. Uh, so yep. that they'll make things a lot easier. 
Thank you so much, Mike. Can I ask one more question? Sure. Uh, Mike, is there an ordinance or some type of uh, requirement that, you know, I, I own an apartment complex, so I, I, under the past, we are under the impression we need to enforce um, automobiles. They either be titled properly, registered properly with the license plate, and be operative if it's in a parking lot. Is that an ordinance or? It is. Okay. As, the, to the best of my knowledge, yes, that is. And, and I, they, they have to be licensed. Yep. Uh, they cannot be sitting in your yard. Right. Uh, but even if they're in your driveway, they do have to be licensed. Yes. Uh, and I don't, I don't think they have to be insured, but they do have to be licensed. I, okay. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm almost positive on that one. Any, is it, is, I wonder if how granular that ordinance is. Is it, is it specific to businesses? And no, it is not. Okay. And we have we have that situation going right now, and I, I can't I won't get into that, but that that is things we're working on. Uh, you know, we're we're working to try to get some of your answers that you're, without getting into too much. Is that ordinance carried in boats and watercraft as well? We can get you a copy of the ordinance too. Okay, I'll, I'll just just wanted, I don't know that. I've got a neighbor that likes to. We can we can get you a copy. Yeah, just one out of my head. I can't answer that because there's no problem. Too many of them tonight. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Okay. As far as my update, I only have one thing, and that is to just approve this meeting uh, date and or this schedule for the rest of the year that we will meet on the first and third uh, Wednesdays of every month at 9 a.m. And so, if I can get a motion to approve that meeting schedule, I'll make a motion. Intention make that motion. Second. Second. Okay. Second by David Reed. Any Hello. discussion about that? This time yeah. works for everyone. Yeah, work for everyone. Um, <clears throat> all in favor of setting the first and third Wednesday at 9 a.m. as our official meeting schedule for the year, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motion carries unanimously. That means our next meeting will be February 5th, and then our other meeting in February will be February 19th, 9 a.m. Yeah. Um, and then that, um, Nancy, were there any updates from the court treasurer's office? Anything yeah. we need to worry about? Okay, thank you, ma'am. All right, I'll take a motion to adjourn then. I'll make a motion. A motion to adjourn made by Jim. Second. Seconded by David. Any discussion or complaints? <laughs> no. All in favor of adjourning now, say aye. 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 Motion to adjourn carries. Meeting is over. Thank you. Good, how are you?